Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Justin Vomagen. We have Peter Penwarden here. He's going to be going over how to sell final expense Facebook leads. He is like the final expense Facebook lead freak here at Senior Life Services. He's begging for Facebook leads. I caught him on his hands and knees one day just pleading <laughs> with the final expense gods for more Facebook leads. So uh, we're going to go over this with him and some of them may be YouTube leads too. YouTube leads are making a hot appearance. If you guys want to more, learn more about YouTube leads, just email me at jve at the jve.com. I got a pretty good uh, a buddy of mine has some, some solid leads there. Also, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and uh, stay tuned through this whole video so you can learn how to totally rock it on your Facebook leads. So, Peter, why do you like Facebook leads, man? Well, definitely because they are a little bit more tech savvy they they're a little bit smarter i'm just going to be honest here they're they're a little bit smarter can you pull the mic a little closer to your mic oh yeah sorry about that cool. yeah they're a little okay. bit smarter more tech savvy so they just know what they're doing when it comes to like computers and things like that so you get a yeah. lot less dementia clients and they kind of if you catch them early they remember doing that that's always fun when you get someone who's like cool. oh yeah i remember looking into that and then you kind of can just go from there but i definitely think they're a lot uh, just a lot smarter. You get less dementia clients, which is something that you'll run into doing the telemarketing leads a lot. Subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications. If you're interested in getting Peter's final expense Facebook lead script, just email me at jve at thejve.com. Yeah, for sure. So guys, we run telemarketing leads and we run some uh, internet leads off of uh, Facebook leads. So in YouTube, we have an SEO site. So what he's saying is that Typically, you obviously, like someone with dementia, they're going to have a hard time going online and filling out a form on Facebook or whatever it may be. So um, there's pros and cons to each lead. The contact rate's a little lower on Facebook leads, but you just got to work them a little more. How many times do you dial? So let's let's walk someone through beginning to the end. So you, you get a lead. We call them WA leads. It means website A. So it's just because they go to a landing page. That's how we designate it. But they are Facebook leads. So how do you um, how do you handle it right from the beginning? How many times do you dial them? Three times. Triple dial them. That's for everyone. Unless it's like straight to voicemail. Then I'll do two of them because I don't want to waste my time on the, the third one. But it's three dials every single time. If it's someone that I'm following up with, it's every two hours. Two to three hours. Okay, cool. Awesome. So you follow up pretty heavy when you're on your Facebook leads. Do you get a lot of follow-up sales from Facebook leads? Yeah, yeah. Follow-up sales are great. It's good to, especially when you can't close that door at the first time, the first go-around, whatever it was, trust. I had to talk to my kids, kind of just trust. You know, they're kind of a little sketchy on things. Follow-up sales are yeah. great, great way to just build up the pipeline as well. Okay, cool. So triple dial, follow up. Now, do you call off your cell phone or a phone or do you, what type of program do you use to call? Vanilla Soft VS Connect. It's amazing. It's super easy to use. And if they block me on my VS Connect phone, then I call them on my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, you know, the last guy that I spoke with, his name was Peter. He said he does the same thing. He's like, <laughs> I call people on that. What I'm going to do here real quick, um, I have a, well, I'm not going to show it because it would be lead info, but I'm working, I'm doing some experimental stuff, generating some YouTube leads. I wanted to show you guys VanillaSoft, but if you just go to VanillaSoft.net um, or VanillaSoft.com, you can schedule a demo or uh, just reach out to me. I can get you a discount through them, uh, through an affiliate link I have. So VanillaSoft.com, uh, VanillaSoft's a great, great company. So... Um, any CRM works, though, guys. You just want to make sure that you, you have them all organized, right? Peter, how many leads do you think you call a day? 200, like 150 bare minimum, but 200 for sure cool. is what I shoot for on a daily basis. Awesome. That's double, triple dialing, people. Yeah, triple dialing, double all the way. Okay, cool, cool. So how many leads would you recommend that people buy? If they need, if they got like some older Facebook leads, some older ones, uh, if you're going to do like a week's work, I mean like a thousand for sure, because okay. it's going to, cool. the, the older ones, the contact rate isn't as high, but as soon as you get them on the phone, it's the same thing. Okay, cool. 
Have you noticed any difference in conversion rate between a brand new Facebook lead and an aged Facebook lead? If they remember doing it, it's more likely that you are to close them because there's a reason why they clicked that link something in their head, like clicked, and they were like, okay, this is something that I need to get done. And that's when they will click, you know, the Facebook, whatever it is, the landing page. And yeah. then once it's fresh, you kind of have more of that need that was just built almost in their head. So if you can get them right when it's fresh, it's a lot easier to convert. But essentially, if I can get someone on the phone, you know, I'm going to try to close them. And they're even a tiny bit interested, then I'm going to close them. But I think oh, yeah. when it's fresher, you just have a more of a chance to to grab them when they're still on that need and they'll remember it. So it's more likely that you'll you can convert it. But at the end of the day, as soon as you get them on the phone, I think it's the same thing with the conversion. OK, cool. So, guys, he's saying you'd want to get about a thousand leads. Now, depending on your work hours, um, it depends how many you'd actually call. So if you get a thousand leads, you want to upload them into a CRM just like Peter has. <laughs> there are other CRMs. VanillaSoft is great. It is. You do have to pay six months in advance, though, when you get it. So to some people, that's a turn off. So there's some other CRMs out there that don't do that. Um, also, you're going to see that my email in the video here, jve at the jve.com. If you want a good source for uh, aged Facebook leads, just reach out. I don't sell leads, guys. I'm not a lead vendor or anything like that. Um, but I do know people who do and that are good, reputable people that I've known in the business for several years that I would stick my neck out for. So you can just email me, jve at the jve.com. You'll see it in the video here. And I can connect you with someone that can uh, hook you up with some uh, good aged leads. So, Peter, you call them, right? Triple dial, triple dial. And then you get someone on the phone, okay? They answer. Um, how do you stay prepared for when that person gets answers, right? And maybe you kind of maybe like distract it. Like you ever get distracted while you're dialing and someone answers you like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's definitely, especially when you're just going through the motions, you get in no voicemail, no voicemail. I have my script. I mean, I, I know my script, like it's the back of my hand, but I make sure that I have the script right in front of me just in case I just go blank in my brain. I'll have it right in front of me just so I can pick up where I am, wherever I am in the, the script. And cool. I'll kind of just go over there and then just having my rebuttals, like just ready for them. Like sometimes they won't even finish getting out and I'm already like given, you know, mm -hmm. my, my rebuttal. Yeah, exactly. Handling it. Like, Oh, I don't remember. Hey, that's totally fine. It's just my job to get you this information in the fastest amount of time possible. Cool. So let's run through all the objections that you could get in the beginning, because what I want to do is give everyone here a master class on how to handle Facebook leads from someone other than me. Um, Peter's in the trenches every day. I am too, but Peter's on the front lines making sales right now. Right. Um, Peter actually works in my division here at SLS. So um, Peter, all right, you call him. Let's do some role play. OK, so mm -hmm. you call me. Uh, hello. Hi, Justin. Yep. Hey, Justin, this is Peter. How you doing today? Good. How can I help you, Peter? Well, the reason for my call, Justin, is you had visited our company's website, just requesting some information on our state-approved final expense programs. Does that ring a bell at all? Oh, yeah, I already took care of it. Oh, I completely understand. A lot of the people I speak with already have some type of coverage, yet they still find this information really valuable. And then if it's depending on like if they're in a state, I'll bring up like, oh, how's the weather over there in sunny Florida or whatever like town they're in. I might bring that up or I'll just kind of go like straight to the script like, uh, so God forbid anything were to happen to you, who would you want taking care of your final arrangements? Okay, Picking up cool. The so you just. <clears throat> okay, sweet. So. That was already have it taken care of. So, guys, um, already have taken care of. Some people like to ask, okay, what? Did, okay, cool. Were you planning on adding something more or seeing if you could get something cheaper than what you have? That's a good question. I like to save that for a little bit farther down the script because um, Same. if someone – a lot of people don't even have – you ever run into someone who says they have it and they don't have it, Peter? Yeah, yeah. I ran into a girl <clears throat> over the weekend who said 
pretended she wasn't the person who I was like, hi, Shamika. And she was like, no, this isn't Shamika. And I just kept going and then kept calling her Shamika too. And then she was like, she's like, I'm not Shamika. I was like, come on. Like, I know you are. She was like, okay, I'm Shamika. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I ended okay, up selling so her too. Lie. Dude, <laughs> they awesome. lie all yeah, the time. Lie. All yeah. the time. So yeah. if you just jump in guys right away to hate, what do you have? And they don't have anything. <laughs> they're going to have to tell a lie within a lie. And then, People don't like lying, right? They do it because they're scared, and then they get more scared about lying. So handle it. I like to handle it how Peter did. Everybody's got their own thing, but Peter does very well. So cool. Now, Peter, um, uh, now next one, okay? Uh, I'm not interested. Hey, I completely understand. Just my job to get you this information in the fastest amount of time possible. So whenever you are, you'll have that. Or I really like what uh, we've talked about in some of our meetings and trainings is what were you interested in back when you were interested? Because that will Perfect. always get like a a response. And then you could kind of like see where you're going with the call as well. Because they'll be like, uh, like I didn't think I had enough coverage or uh, I was just going through Facebook, you know, and I thought it was free, yeah. <laughs> something like that. You know, you'll you'll get more of the reason why they filled out this information and kind of see where you can go from there. Cool. Um, other ones they're going to tell you is I don't have time or I don't remember. How do you handle it? I don't, I'm busy. If they're saying they're busy I, and like, they're like, can you call me back? I'll be like, yeah, I completely understand. Just so for when I do call you back, I want some information, make sure I got it correctly. So who would be taking care of your final arrangements or is this your cool. date of birth or is this your favorite color? Whatever it is. And then, so you just try to jump so into it. it. Yeah. And sometimes you'll be surprised. A lot of times, uh, I had one lady, you know, oh, I just got home, like, I'm going to sleep, blah, blah, blah. And I just did that and then kept going through it and ended up selling her 40 minutes later, you know. Heck like yeah. Awesome. Sweet. And then uh, I don't remember. How do you handle that? Yeah, I don't remember doing that. I never did that. Hey, I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> so I completely understand that. No, no, just keep going. Cool. Awesome. So, guys, the the thing is... What you say is important, but what's more important is that you say the same is that you're you know what you're going to say before they even say it, because you, you got to practice this and role play this. And you can either learn it by calling leads for 12 hours a day, several days straight, or you can learn it by practicing and calling leads. So I would practice because you guys are going to are you guys are going to spend money on leads. All right. Don't don't waste your time. It's like it's, if you're playing a sport, you're not going to practice in the game. Right. So. Make sure you role play. What I would do is um, get flashcards. So get a flashcard that has the what they tell you, and then the response on the back. Okay, so you're gonna say it, and then you flip it, and then and then that way you can memorize it. There's really only four things people are gonna tell you. Um, I'm not interested. I already have insurance. I don't have time, or I don't remember. And then sometimes they'll say like I'm a veteran, or uh, which is the VA only gives them like a few hundred bucks when they die. So that's total, that doesn't count. And then um, like they could say some ones that make more sense too. Like, like I have no money. I can't afford anything. Um, or, but the most common ones are I already have coverage and I'm not interested. Those are like 80%. Would you say that's like 70 or 80% of what people say? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, 100%. cool. So now say um, someone says, yeah, yeah. I'm Okay. So what helps you increase? Have you, have you found that you can do anything to increase the amount of agreement you get in the beginning? Anything you can say or do how you say things to get less people to give you pushback. Subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications. If you're interested in getting Peter's final expense Facebook lead script, just email me at jve at thejve.com. Oh, yes. Tonality is huge. If you come off the bat like you know this person and that they're your best friend, I've had people who just from my greeting like will start talking to me and and think I'm one of their friends and coming off the bat with that energy because you only have like three seconds to impress these people they're literally getting called by you know you're not the only insurance agent calling them so if you just kind of almost come across like for me like relentlessly like like energy and you're just like almost off the walls on it but like you're you know, you're, you're there. We're going to call you it the big that. Peter energy. <laughs> that will 100% <laughs> like they will, they will, 
you're more likely to have them stick on the phone and actually listen to what you have to say. I found that too. So guys, if you're calling someone, uh, a good thing to do is listen to your call recordings. Record yourself on your phone. Record your greeting and listen to yourself. You want to record yourself over and over and over again. And you want to ask yourself, would I stay on the phone with me? Okay? Because you're, you have to have enthusiasm. Be excited. No one wants to talk to someone boring. If you're a woman and, you are, and, you, and you're going through this, make sure you're not talking too high pitch because that can happen where the enthusiasm comes off in a way that's really high pitch. And if you're a guy with a super deep voice, you definitely have to be like, like, eh, like extra cheery. Okay. So call them like, this is how I like to look at it. You call them like you are calling them to help them and call that because you're helping them get coverage for their family and call them like they are, they should be expecting your call. Like it's not a surprise that they called you. That's how I like to do it. And like, like you, like, you know, uh, one thing that you can do, guys, to, is if you look at the lead, okay, and you find something familiar about the lead that you can r uh, relate to, right? So if they're like, oh, they live in Orlando, Florida, I love Disney World. Like, you may not even have to bring that up to them, but that automatically gets you in a good mood when talking to someone. So, Peter, um, and, then, and then tempo, too, guys. If you heard his tempo, yes. he goes slow. How has temp Have you ever had to change your tempo? Did you used to speak faster than you do now? Yeah, yeah. Um I remember being struggling for a little bit when, because uh, we have a great system where we have assistants where people come on our calls and help us close um, for like our first two weeks. So after that, there's a little bit of a um, learning curve because you have to learn to do it on your own. I remember you taking me into a room and us going over some recordings. And I remember you asked me, like, we only went through my greeting and you asked me, you're like, what do you think? And I was like, oh, I'm going way too fast, man. Like, I'm going way too fast. Yeah. And and I just realized that. And, that, like, it was just like a flip and switch. And then once I figured out the tempo, sometimes, you know, older clients, I go a little bit slower than with um, younger clients. But tempo is huge. You want to make sure that they're really understanding what you're saying. And it's in a good tempo. Cool. So say it slow enough so that people understand what you're saying, guys, because especially age leads, if you're calling an age Facebook lead, look, it, they probably filled that form out in a total of like 15 seconds and then it was gone. So you got to make sure that you go slowly so that they understand every single word that you're saying and that there's no confusion. So if you get people saying, huh, what's this about? You're probably going too fast. So now uh, moving on to the next part. So you got through the greeting um, and then you, you got through the Well, let's just real quick before we get into the next phase. How do you stay positive throughout the day when you're calling people over and over and you may not get a bunch of, you may not get answers for a few dials in a row? I just try to like sit there and look at my goals, like what I'm really doing it for. And if it's, you know, you have a bad call, someone curses you out, screams at you and I'll, you know, and it really got under my skin, I'll take a walk reset cool kind of get locked in maybe do a bunch of maybe do a couple push-ups you know to like kind of get get back into it but yeah, you, you have to gotta get pumped <laughs> yeah you really have to I'm stay on top of that, that peter can you should thanks bro <laughs> let, her, let her out let her out it's fine she may okay it's all good sorry brother my, my dog was it's all good Zach came in, <laughs> dog's barking at him even though she sees him like every day <laughs> gotta love it here, look at them. <laughs> oh, yeah, crazy. Okay, cool. So um, I like to take a midday walk sometimes. If I find myself taking yes. more time to get stuff done, go for a 10, 15-minute walk, guys. So if you find yourself, like, getting crazy distracted in your squirrel brain, just go for a walk. So uh, push-ups, whatever you got to do, and, and anything Peter said, it, you know, applies to that. Um, so next you get someone into the uh, next part of the, which is to me the most important part of the whole presentation, um, mm -hmm. the fact finding. So how do you, how do you take someone through that role play with me? Take me through that. I usually start with uh, so God forbid anything were to happen to you, the good Lord calls you home. Who would you want taking care of your final arrangements? Like picking up the pieces for you. Uh, if you can move your mic a little closer to your mouth. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah. So cool. I basically just ask, like, God forbid anything were to happen to you, who would you want picking up the pieces, taking care of your final arrangements? Okay. Cool. Um, guys, if you want the script that Peter uses, just email me, jbe at the jbe.com and ask me for a copy of it. So I would want, uh, I would say, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my, my, my children. I, I want my, my children too. Awesome. Gotcha. And I'll ask, like, any grandbabies or how many children were you blessed with? That's usually what I start off with. Cool. <coughs> so you ask a question about the beneficiary and then you try to build, like, a little, just have a little conversation, please. Yeah, that's that's always my go-to. I'm always like, how many children were you blessed with? And then they'll tell me, and I'll be like, got any grandbabies? Just trying to understand, like, who they're doing this for and, like, how much that person, like, really means to them and how much taking this burden off of them would mean to the client as yeah. well. Do you, um, do you ask the name, the beneficiary name? Sometimes I've been I've been doing that more recently because I've found it's easier to build that. Like it probably sparks something in their head when you say their name, yeah. and once I figure out their name, I say their name, the client's name, and I say their beneficiary's name as much as possible. Like I try to say it at least like twenty or thirty times. Like I'd be like, "All right, Justin. So just so I can best serve you here, are you capable of making the insurance decisions on your own?" And then, yeah. you know, so you handle like so, all of your finances and such, and I would go from there. Yep, that's the next step after you de declare the beneficiary. Yeah, yeah, make sure that they're the decision maker. And not only, I really hone in on that because if you've been doing this for a while, that's like the biggest thing you hate to run into. It's like, oh, I yeah, need to talk to my kids. That. Yeah, it's like, I need to talk to my kids or my wife. If it's, if they're married, I'd be like, and it's a guy, I'll be like, is this something that we need to go over with the missus? I don't want to get you in the doghouse or anything like that. Yep. That one makes him laugh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's true. Because I just, sorry guys, I'm eating almond butter. It's early in the morning. I didn't, I didn't eat my breakfast on time. So I'm going to be a weirdo and eat my almond butter. And so um, a guy I just spoke with he, uh, the other day, he said he won't even present unless husband and wife are there. How do you, how do you handle if uh like they're married and the spouse isn't there how, how do you handle that if they have to like they said like i'll pretty much just ask them like in a kind of a different way but like hey let's say we found you something today is that something that we'd have to go over with the missus before we got set up and then i'll you know mention that like hey like i don't want to get you in the doghouse or anything like that like and if he's like no i could do this on my own and then he brings it back up in the close, then I'll be like, we're just trying to really get you approved here at the end of the day, mm -hmm. really up to the insurance company. Like we don't even know if this product is what you'll be able to tell your wife that you have. Yeah, exactly. So, cause guys, you're going to run into that. I know people who sell face to face who won't, um, won't even present right. If, if the husband and wife, but you can dig in and ask them, I'll st I still get sales when the husband's there and the wife isn't. So it's up yeah. to you how, how you guys want to handle that. So cool. Next, so you, next you go. What's the next part of the fact finding after you establish? And what did they say? They don't make decisions themselves. Just try to schedule an appointment with whoever does make the decisions. Talk okay, to cool. them. Yeah, immediately yeah. too. Or sometimes I might dive a little bit to see if it's even worth scheduling the callback. Okay. I'd be like, you know. I'll see like yeah, you don't want to waste time on that guys. So that's like such a dream. Yeah. And the next thing that I go to is if they have any existing coverage okay. in place. And if they don't, then I really at first I'm like, really? I'm like kinda like, you know like not condescending, but like, oh wow, you don't you don't have anything set up? Like and then I'll be like, I mean has there been anything that's prevented you from getting something set up so far? Have you put it on the back burner? Is it something you haven't been aware of? Is it a finance issue? Mm -hmm. Then if they put said, I've been putting it on the back burner, I'm closing them. Like that, that is a done deal. I yep. promise you, cause I'm going to hone in on, okay, you put this on the back burner for long enough. Like what happens tomorrow? 
yeah, that's, that's usually my next question. It's like, God forbid anything were to happen to you today. Like, w would it hurt your, and then I'll go to the beneficiary, your daughter, your wife, if they have to come ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And then they'll that's be a like, lot. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, so let's make sure that we get this financial burden off of them. Because not only is it a financial burden, it's an emotional burden. Exactly. So if we can get rid of one me. of those, we're going to do that, right? And they're like, yeah. And cool. I keep going. Yeah. Awesome. No, I, I always like to ask, like, hey, um, do you want me to help you take care of this? Do you want me to help you get this figured out? And yeah. And they can, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you. And if, you know, because you have to establish that need. So next, what's the next step for you? I got my, I forgot, but I got my script. <laughs> this is no, it's cool. literally no, why it's good to. Can, Good to have your script right next to you guys because, yeah, yeah. I mean, all it takes is one second like that, and you really don't want any dead air. You want to make sure that you're always talking to them. So have your script, like, even if you can remember it back and forth, have it printed out as well so you can always. make notes on it and make notes on mine. And then I see what it's uh, intended to be covering. So what we're looking for here is this going to be for a burial and leaving some extra behind, a cremation. That will help me with what I want to quote as well kind of give me a ballpark on what to expect um, and try to see if they're trying to leave some like money, extra money behind as well. And you'll have like people pretty much tell you what they're like, Oh, I want this for a funeral. And then anything left is going to be for my kids. I just yep. don't want that burden falling on top of them. And I want them to have a little bit extra money. Be like, okay, we're trying to leave a legacy behind too. Like, yeah. Cool. All right, cool. Um, and after that, we're here role, role play with me. The next steps here. Then it's, uh, it's just so that I could figure out exactly what you qualify for. I do work with a consulting firm. So we work with seven to eight of the best companies in your state. I'm going to ask you a series of health questions. Any heart, liver, kidney, or lung issues? Nope. I've seen people ask as well if it's okay to ask health questions. I used to do that, but now I just dive into it. I don't really ask for permission for for anything because you're just giving them an out because what if they're like no yeah exactly so, i get that and then i'll be like you know just ask all the health um we have like cancer heart attack strokes copd diabetes and i make sure that if they're you know above 50 i'll make sure that they get that like literally go to their medicine cabinet and read off every prescription yeah. so that so you, can you ask if notes. they have it heart liver kidney lung issues cancer, mm -hmm. diabetes, heart attack, stroke, COPD, medications. And then mm -hmm. you ask about height and weight. Yeah, height and weight. And I'll say a little cheesy line, like my mom always told me to never ask a lady her weight. So how much do you want to weigh today? And then be like, they'll tell me their weight. I don't care if they're 350 pounds. I'd be like, I know you're turning heads when you walk the sidewalk. <laughs> I love that one. They always laugh at that one. And if it's yeah. a guy, I'll be like, oh, that's all muscle. Yep. And Love that one. I think I stole that from you. <laughs> <laughs> All good. You can keep it. <laughs> Appreciate. <laughs> and uh, tobacco use after that. Tobacco use. Yeah. That's okay. So you you eva so you you uh, let's let's recap, guys. So in the fact finding, what he does when he gets a Facebook lead on the line, he asks them. He establishes the beneficiary. Establishes this if, if they're a decision maker. Ask them what they have for insurance right now. Do do you ask him at that point what they have for insurance? I think we already. Oh went yeah, over that, yeah, right? yeah. Um, okay, I asked cool. them if they have coverage. We kind of dove into um, if they didn't, but if they do have coverage, I get the company, the monthly, and the face amount. How much coverage? Ever do a they policy got. review. Yeah, I love policy reviews. They're huge, especially when you hear something that's like, like you've once you've been in doing this for a little bit longer, you could, you start to get a ear to like certain premiums. And if they're this mm -hmm. age, okay, th their whole life should be this much. And you can kind of hear if it's a term and to get into the policy review, I'll usually be like, Oh wow, that's like super amazing. And I really hope that I could get some of my clients on that program as well. So let's give them a call and just go over that and see, exactly like what it is just so you know kind of like like get them all like excited because they have such a good thing and i want to offer it to my clients so what you'd be doing would really be helping my clients and me out 
and we'll go to a policy review or I don't I don't ask them like hey do you want to call the company I'll most likely be like okay we're doing this like we're going to start calling them and cool so so you call that company and then you uh, ask them like what they have and yeah you go yeah I say hey I'm a licensed insurance agent trying to do a policy review with a client and then they'll have to confirm some information that's why it's that's why I um that's why it's good to not ask if they have any life insurance until a little bit later in the script so you can have built that rapport because they're probably probably going to have to give their social or some private information to the policy review you want to like come across like an expert and they know like you do this every day so that it's a lot easier for them to give that information cuz when I first started i've had a couple people just hang up on me trying to do a policy review yeah because they'll ask things like that yeah okay cool so you establish that and then you can at that point guys you'll know whether you're going to add coverage or maybe uh, get them something better and and oh yeah yeah place i'll ask them like are we looking to add on some coverage today if they've had a policy that was like 10 years ago whole life that's paid up don't really like if it's already like you know in fifty thousand dollars of coverage that it's paid up it's not there's really no need there so i asked yeah. them hey we're just looking to add on some coverage looking to leave a gift behind and if they say no then i'm usually okay on to the next yeah what if um now now after you ask the health information you probably established like exactly what they need it for right yeah yeah for sure um that's the need is probably already built and, you know, kind of hammered down a couple points there. The health is a good uh, way to build rapport as well, because you don't want to just seem like you're not a human being. You know, you want to ask these, like if they've had a heart attack, like, oh my gosh, like, is everything all right? How was your recovery? If it was a stroke, did you lose any feeling on any sides of your body? Like that must have scared the family. Like, and then after I ask all that, I'd be like, and how long ago was that? Are you taking any medications for it? You know, kind of like ask, ask those questions that you need to ask. But first, like actually care about these people. Like that must be scary. Imagine like hearing that your mom, your dad had a heart attack, stroke, like, yeah, that would scare me. Same. (laughs) (laughs) Something happened with my dad a couple years ago. I got scared. I didn't know what was going on. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, guys, establish the need. Um, I found if if you can't establish a need, I, w- I don't even move on. It's like yes. I just know right away. It's like does someone really care about this? And if they don't, there's not much you can do. And you're going to also get people who are going to talk and talk and talk and talk, but they're never going to buy anything. So you want to really – you got you've had those people, Peter. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, especially when you bring it back to insurance and then they're like, uh, 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 uh. It's like – Wait, what's what's going on here? They're, yeah, they're, they're obviously trying to talk about everything else except insurance. Exactly. Cool. So uh, establish the need, guys. One thing I like to ask um, when I get like when I jump on to help a new agent close the sale. Uh, that's how we have it set up here. By the way, uh, subscribe to the channel, please. Turn on post notifications if if you like this because you're going to hear more interviews, more videos, more tips, more ways to help you close more sales. If you want a copy of Peter's script, email me jve at the jve.com and if you want sources for for leads or anything like that just reach out to me so uh i, I think i i like to say if they can't tell you why they're not going to buy so it's uh I like that <laughs> yeah if they can't tell you why they're not going to buy so like you guys literally what, what i like to say is hey if if you if you went to bed tonight um and everybody's got a different thing i'm, I'm pitching like kind of how i jump when i jump on a call how, what i ask right away to establish hey boom is this person serious Okay, so Peter, if you went to bed tonight and didn't wake up in the morning, what would that look like for John, the beneficiary? So I'd, I'd say that. Yeah, and they're usually like, it wouldn't look good. Yeah, yeah, oh, it would be tough. Okay, now, first yeah. thing that's going to happen, Peter, John's going to go to the funeral home. And uh, he's going to say, my mom passed. And the funeral director, and I know this because my uncle owns a funeral home. The funeral director is going to say, hey, John, um, I'm really sorry for your loss. But let's let's just get this handled first. How are you going to pay for this? Cash, credit, or a check, or money order? How are you paying for this? And and so, what would John's answer be, Peter? Wow. <laughs> How would John credit. pay for this? 
credit. Probably okay. credit. What if he even has credit, right? You gotta figure yeah. guys. Most of our clients are lower income. Their kids are probably lower income too. Okay. So um you ask that question and they they usually don't want to answer it. Okay. You're gonna get some weird things here like oh, I don't really know or they they'd figure it out. They, okay, cool. So I know you wanna help them be able to take care of this. All right. Do you want me to help you figure out how you can help them handle that and and not have to deal with that? Do you want me to help you with that? And they say, yeah, or, or no, or, you know, and you, at that point you'll have to handle it there. But guys, ask them those hard questions. If you went to, remember, if you went to bed tonight, didn't wake up tomorrow morning, what would that look like for John? Uh, what do you mean? They usually say, what do you mean? Right. Say, if you went to bed and died tonight and you woke up and you didn't wake up in the morning, if you passed away. Okay. Because we don't know how many days we have left. It's going to happen someday. So if you didn't wake up tomorrow, if you passed away, what would it look like for John? What would John's day look like tomorrow? Would yeah. You, how would he that. handle that? Yeah. And they're, they're like, oh, God. And then. Because and then, you're so you building don't. that scenario in their head. And they're like, wow. Like, they would really have nothing, essentially. I mean, whatever they have. But it's obviously not enough for a, a funeral rule cremation i mean there's like a statistic 75 percent of americans don't even have a thousand dollars sitting in their bank account mm -hmm. i'm gonna look at average americans what would you say the average age of one of our clients children is our clients children 40 something oh yeah 40s 40s so i'm gonna look at average savings of a 40 year old um the fed's most recent numbers so the average savings for the age group is twenty seven thousand nine hundred dollars for a 40 year old so, um, it's all their savings. Even if they have, they should. So the the general rule of thumb is have one times your annual income saved by age thirty, three times by age forty. So, guys, if if someone's age, most people are not going to have one hundred twenty grand in their bank account by age forty. So look, even if they had that coming out twenty grand out of their pocket for a funeral is going to be a lot of money. That's a big chunk. Even if you have one hundred twenty, even if you have one hundred twenty grand coming out twenty, that's sixteen percent of your money to pay for the funeral. So even if these clients are like, well, they'll be able to handle it. Be like, yeah, but I, I would pay for my dad's, but I don't want to, right? I said I that like word for word before. It. Yeah, it's, and it's like as a, and I'll say this too, I'll be like, as a parent, we shouldn't want to, I don't have kids, but I'll be like, as a parent, we shouldn't want to put that on our children, right? And, you know, they'll go from there, but Mm -hmm. they should want to handle that too as well. Like you kind of want to get that across from them unless they hate their kids, <laughs> which I've run into. <laughs> They'll start screaming and cursing their kids off. They're like they don't deserve anything, but yeah, you know, no, it's true. if they actually care about their kids, they're going to want to get something in play. It, like even in, in the slightest, they're going to want to prevent that, that burden. Cause at the end of the day, that's them leaving behind like a burden. In, in yeah. reality, it is. Have you ever sold someone who told you that who who couldn't really figure out why they wanted it? This week, I had this lady who had a friend, like didn't really just like wanted to like didn't want to leave a burden behind, but like it wasn't for like her kids or anything. But she, she has, said like, a she brother. didn't want to leave it behind, though, right? She didn't want to leave. Yeah, her. yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying yeah. is, if someone is like indecisive, they can't figure out whether they even want to like have it ha taken care of by anybody. Right. You, you know what I'm talking about. You got because you guys yeah. are going to run into people that are like, I don't know. I, I don't they don't care if they don't care. It's going to be very hard to sell. Them. Yeah. I d yeah. It's usually it's usually just like on to the next. This lady that I had this week was just like a, an anomaly, to be honest. Like not many people want to take care of their final arrangements if there's not like anyone there. I've like had no that. need there. Yeah. I've had, I had a lady leave it to her pastor. Right. So mm -hmm. it was like. It was like, you know, she's like, I don't have any kids. I don't, ha I don't know any. I'm really close to my relatives. I'm gonna leave it to my pastor. So I was like, okay, yeah, you can do that. Yes, exactly. No need though. They're they're probably not, not getting it. You know. Yeah, it's like if all. if someone has no hands, you can't sell them a pen. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, you know, it, it, you guys. You, and and it's a thing too. You pick and choose your battles because if someone may be you you may call someone right and they may be pissed off at their say they just got in a fight with their kids. And they're like, a lot of our clients are emotional. So imagine they're, they're vengeful, right? They're, they're spiteful. They're like, oh, no, nope, my daughter, I don't even care right now. I'm pissed at her, right? That doesn't mean that 
down the road they're not going to be because all these people especially if you buy age leads right an age lead is just a new lead that was not followed up enough so timing a circumstance someone t i've had people say not interested we we've had people here at our agency i see it in the notes from new leads when they're turned to age leads not interested nope never want insurance all of a sudden yeah boom i want it and they buy it so it's all timing and circumstance too. So make sure you give them your cell phone number too, guys. Make sure you give them your cell phone number and they save you and you send them a picture of you or a business card or a digital business card you can make on HiHello.com. Uh, that's very important so that they remember you so that they can call you when they do that. So we established the need, Peter. Um, I know you ask if they have a bank account probably and then yeah, we go yeah. into the presentation. Just, uh, you know, and if, if you're feeling a little bit uh, sketchy about that one just be like just so you know some of our carriers offer discounts based on how you manage your finances and a lot of um companies do charge a 10 percent if they use a card or anything it's like active checkings or savings account yep that'd be Gerber like checking 10 percent for the for the debit surprise you know, also in a joke that. there too yeah yeah i'm surprised too because of never gonna stay probably <laughs> yeah like they're gonna i have one lady that i think um a direct express like a card that i think she will have her policy forever but she called me when she got her, a new card like i'm like top priority for what she need like for her bills like i'm top priority but she's really trying to protect her family I've, she's got child riders she wants her grandkids like i remember getting a call on my cell phone like literally like hey i got a new card um i need to give this to you right and i'm like yeah and she's she's awesome though she'll call me um like to see to kind of like figure out her finances for the month you know awesome. she got coverage on her uncle as well oh okay cool so she got a couple policies with you yeah yeah i've got her whole family covered to be honest nice sweet dude cool um so okay so you uh establish if they have a bank account um, oh, one thing, what Peter likes, what, what do you, how do you say that, Peter? How do you do that? Yeah, it's now some of our carriers offer discounts based on how you manage your finances. And of course, I don't need any specific information right now. But do you have an active checkings or savings account? Yeah. So, okay, cool. So you ask that. And then next, no, what's the next express. step? Yep. Then we go into the presentation. My favorite part. Just dive into it, depending on which company it is. Great. Well, based off of everything you said to me so far, I think XYZ is the best fit for you. And basically what you're telling me here is you want to make sure this is taken care of for your family. And you feel like this yeah. is something worth looking into, right? And yes. Then, and be like, well, that makes sense. And our company offers a welcome packet. And I'll do a little brush up on the companies. So I'll say like, oh, they're this rated with Better Business Bureau. They've been in the business for this long, kind of like a pointers. And I've got I've got them noted here for each company. Like this is this, this, okay, that. Sweet. I'll mention certain things from this company, kind of build up some, you know, just that they know this is a reputable company. They've yeah. been in the business for a while. And then our company offers a welcome packet you know, senior life services. And I'll say my, uh, and sometimes I'll have them write this down as well. Like, Hey, grab a pen and a piece of paper, like write this down. Like I want you to get down all this information, know exactly what you're getting yourself into, you know, I don't, and I won't say it like that, but I'll be like, so you'll get a welcome packet from my company, senior life services. Like I said, we're a consultant firm. We've been in the business for over 50 years and we are also a plus rated with the better business bureau give them some cool. time to process that in the welcome packet you get the free living will final wishes planning guide free prescription discount card kind of just brush over that and then i go over the features of the policy and this is where i really kind of dial in and re like just talk about how this is going to what this is going to do for your family when that time does come whole life premium payments just highlight each thing what it is cash value if it's got any benefits if it has a terminal illness benefit i really like talk about the terminal illness benefit yeah, because big one. that is huge that is huge <clears throat> and then you do the little trial close after you've been through all of the benefits 
something like based off of all those benefits that you qualify for, do you think it would make sense to get a program like this in place if we find something that fits your budget? Mostly everyone's like, yeah, if it fits the budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guys, it's really important too for final expense to make sure you're quoting people properly because you got to figure the average mm. person probably makes 1500 to two grand a month. Okay, so like... If you're if you're quoting super high to try to crank these people, you're gonna have a lot higher chargebacks. It's just it's just what it is. Like the average premium and final expense is usually like seventy seventy some bucks a month. If they were rich, they would not have requested information to help for a plan to cover their funeral. Wealthy people with the, with several hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars in their IRAs four hundred one k, they do not care about this no. product at all. They don't care. They just—it's not a big deal. They're—they're they're paying for this with the interest on their account. So, uh, these are people who are—we're working with the bottom forty percent of income earners. So, understand also that people may commit. Be, uh, with that being said, they're at the bottom percent, so they're probably less responsible with their money. So, they're going to commit to something. There's a good chance they're going to commit to something. Um, not a good chance. There's a higher chance they're going to commit to something that they can't see through. So, yeah, I've uh, really talked important. clients down. I've talked to a client, a couple clients down on coverages because I just, I want them to be able to manage it on a monthly basis. Like, Hey, I'll say that too. Like, Hey, I get that you're trying to leave as much money as possible, but I want to make sure that they're getting this money. So the policy is staying exactly. on the books. I want this to be manageable for you on a month to month basis. So let's just go ahead and do this program and yep. they'll just go with that one. But I don't want them. You don't want them to have too much because you want them to, you want them to have this policy for the rest of their life and you want their kids to be receiving this money. You don't want a year later, oh, I can't afford it or anything like that because the kids aren't going to see the money if yeah, that's exactly. the case. Now, guys, this is, it's especially important with guaranteed issue to do that because you f I find a higher percentage of guaranteed issue fall off. You find a higher percentage of Gerber cancel than other ones or miss payments. Yeah. It's like all yeah. the time. It's like insane. So those can totally crush your quality. So like we measure quality here, guys, on what's still on the books between weeks 13 and 26, I think. It's a 13-week quality. So how much of your business that you wrote 13 to 26 weeks ago is still on the books, okay? Peter's is about 65%, but that's taking into account that he has um, – if you write guaranteed issue, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot lower. So his persistency on his simplified issue policies, I would say, is above eighty percent on the ones that he writes that are are simplified issue. About it's probably seventy five to eighty percent, which is good for on the phone. Yeah, yeah. seventy five. Just got the report yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, awesome, sweet. So yeah, so he's at seventy five, and and then um, simplified is always going to be higher than than guaranteed issue. So. Cool. So now, uh, how do you quote people? We'll get we'll get into that. Now, what's the next step? What do you what do you do to quote people? Do you have a pen and piece of paper? Awesome. Go grab that for me. And I quote. This is where I said uh, asking what they're kind of looking for. So if it was a funeral, go for it. Now, if they're 84 and they have no coverage and they're looking for a funeral, I'm not going to quote them 25, 20, and 15, or you know, 20, 15, and 10. Yeah. I'm going to quote them like maybe even five, eight and 10 because the, the rates get really wild when you, um, when you get past 80. Will you give them some higher quotes to, to have just in case they want to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could kind of feel out once you start quoting them as well. Like mm -hmm. you'll, you'll quote the first one cause I start high to high to low. Yeah. So I start off with the highest one. So if it's like 25, 20, 15, I'll start with 25 and 20. Sometimes I'll even quote them the max just so they know what that like, looks like. Like, hey, this is the max that you're eligible to be qualified for. Don't shoot me now, but it's 50000 in coverage, and the payment's going to be only 350 bucks. Emphasize, like, every one, every price that you tell them is a steal. Like, oh, this is only this much, and this is only... Like, it's really cheap. Like, you're, you're going to love these rates. And then that's where, like I was saying, if it's a funeral, I'll be doing 20, 15, 10. And I try to quote from 80 to 150. Because okay. I, I figured out, like, I would quote, 
I'd be I used to be scared to to quote high because I used to think about it from like my perspective like sixty bucks a month like ah you know yeah. and then I was like you know what like no I need to stop thinking like that I'm limiting myself. You guys so, are gonna quote the way that you think of money. So if you think a hundred yeah. bucks a month is a lot. You're gonna have trouble quoting a hundred bucks a month. And if you think that it's gonna come across in your tone as well, so. Yeah. Like, just just know that you are helping these people. This is literally, like, think about your car insurance. Stop thinking about it as a monthly bill. Think about it as, like, you know, like, some people pay. I was paying 400 for my car insurance at one point, which is crazy. But go 25 20 and that's usually from the 150 to $80 range. Start high to low. This is what I do. Start high to low. And after that, I'm saying, so now, which of these benefits do you think would best fit your needs for not only you, but your, and then I'll bring up the beneficiary, like your daughter. And that's where getting their name really matters because you can hone in on that. Like, what is, which of these do you think would best fit your needs for you and Stacy? Cool. Awesome. Sweet. And then at that point... How long do you hang in there for an objection if they give you an objection? Because by that point, I mean, the reason I ask guys is because you, if you go through the whole thing correctly and you establish it the decision maker and, and, they, and you establish that they need it, how long will you push, Peter? How much will you push if they give you, if they give you pushback and how do you handle that? <laughs> Probably till they hang up. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm going to be honest. So they hang up and then I'll call them back and be like, hey, sorry I was so pushy. And then kind of just build rapport for a little bit. And then be like, Follow so are we ready to, yeah, it's like, are we ready to set this up today? I'm not really asked it like that, to be honest. I don't like asking it like that. I'll kind of be like, hey, I know we were talking about this, that, and the third yesterday. and Kind of go over some information again. And if there was like, oh, I needed to talk to this, which hopefully it wasn't because I should have, you know, hammered that away in the rapport building. Exactly. Be like, yeah. Did you ever get a chance to talk to them? What do they say? What do they think? Cool. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So that's it. And then he goes through the application process. So guys, um, Peter just gave, put his whole process out there on the line for you guys. <laughs> uh, Peter, any any con any questions or any last words, brother? I appreciate it. Y'all, this, this YouTube channel has helped me from the start. You know, I've been watching this. It's you blessing up the the youth you blessing up the agents man it's yoda I appreciate yoda it blessing. <laughs> with his, but with seriously his yoda bling seriously thank you and yeah. um if you guys are out there keep pushing you got this um i know days get hard you know, a lot of blood sweat and tears but it's all worth it seriously yeah. this is a get rich slow type of business and if you put in the work you stay disciplined it's gonna work out for you in the long run i promise you that from firsthand experience Cool. All right. Thanks, Peter. Hey, man. Appreciate it. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications. If you look up here, you're going to be able to learn how Ashley built the team from zero to $6 million in AP per month in less than two years. So you're going to watch that next video there, and she talks about everything that you would need to know to grow and completely take off and explode in this business. So hope you guys like that, and uh, thanks for joining in.